Hello everybody and welcome back to Let's Play Star Ruler 2 with me, the Dragoclaw. So last time, Purple arbitrarily declared war on us and they have giant fleets which we cannot hope to match at this time. However, I have thought about it off camera and I think I've come up with a decent plan. So what I need to do is first of all get into range of this fling beacon and recombine my fleets. I I think I've finished building one last time. It's been a couple days since I last recorded. Uh, I've built this Dreadnought. It's at full capacity at the moment, which is unfortunate, and it's only got 406 strength. So I'm going to have to um, do some radical things to make sure it has the firepower necessary to take out that fleet. But before we do any of that, I am going to start designing some new ships, because the ones we have at the moment are just not sufficient. Okay, seeing as the Dreadnought is probably the only one that's we've got that we've got a reasonable chance of building within a good amount of time, I'm gonna create a Dreadnought class. Let's go ahead and change the size to 64. Uh, so this is the Create Your Ship screen. You'll see in the middle here we have a ship design. It's based on uh, these size categories. So you can have a corvette of size 1 uh, or 1 plus all the way up to battleship which is 16 plus. Anything lower than 16 is considered a support cruiser and cannot uh, go out on its own and needs a flagship to support it or to support I guess um, and 16 plus are flagships. This size here determines how big the ship is, not necessarily in terms of hexes, but in terms of uh, firepower and support capacity and how much each of these sub uh, systems do. So we'll go with 64 because that's the same size as a dreadnought. I could change this to anything I want, it doesn't have to be a uh, multiple of 2, it could be 70 or 71, a anything I like, but I'm going to go ahead and stick with 64 just because that's the default size. Um, first of all, we are going to need some crew facilities because we need these people to actually be able to fly the ship. So let's go ahead and stick a cockpit in there. So you'll see this has given us uh, a crew capacity, a uh, command capacity, and some repair. So the more crew you have, the more repair you get, and the more crew you have, and the more command you have. You need command to be able to fit in more subsystems. The more subsystems there are, the more command it takes. Uh, yeah, but we don't need any of that. We only need one, maybe two crew facilities, so... In fact, let's just do that, and if we need to, we can expand it to there. Next thing I like to do is to put a ton of supply on because supply is extremely valuable. You need it to take over uh, enemy planets, you need it to fight effectively. If you lose all your supply then your weapons effectiveness is down to 50%, so I like to have a decent amount of that in. Uh, that will give us 30k. That's still probably not enough at the moment, so let's just go ahead and maybe bump that up to 40. Or oh, 47, yeah, that's good enough. Uh, now let's go with some support command. This is the uh, ships that fly around it. The current Dreadnought has about 75. I would like to see that raised to about 200. I think that would be a good amount. Uh, 228, yeah, that, that seems well. I could fit so many more people on. 341. Yeah, okay, we'll, we'll go with 341 because that's a decent amount. Now, you'll notice I'm not leaving that much room for weapons. I tend not to put weapons on my flagships and tend to rely on my support ships to do all the damage. That is a uh, question wall decision, possibly, because these ships can do a ton of damage. Uh, but in the beginning, I feel like just having tons of support ships is far more valuable DPS than one big ship. That said, when you get later into a research tree and can have better weapons. I do like to build a like a ship with nothing but weapons and on it so that it can do long range fire support I guess. But 
we'll get into that when we get the weapons and everything. Okay, so what else do we need? We need an engine for this thing. So we have a choice of two engines, the rocket engine, which produces very high thrust but also costs a lot, uh, but doesn't need power. Then we have the iron engine, which produces low thrust, uh, costs less, but uh, requires power. So you can see here, if, if you're looking at the money income, one iron engine is about uh, 7k initially, and then 2k per turn. Rocket engine is actually about the same initially, but it takes more per turn. Um, I'm still not entirely sure which is my favourite. Um, I'm going to go with a rocket engine here. Uh, get that thrust up to about 200. Yeah, that'll do. Okay, and let's pump out this supply. I am going to put one weapon on this thing. I'm going to give it a token missile launcher. Right about here. Give it some DPS. See, 14 DPS, that is pretty good. Um, yeah, so it's, it's worth putting on, but the only reason I'm putting this weapon on is so that I can actually tell the uh, frigate to, or the capital ship to fire on people, because otherwise you've just got the option to move to, and that's a bit... Well, I wouldn't say buggy, because it kind of works as intended, but it's annoying, let's just say that. Now the rest of this, I'm going to put on these various types of armour. So different types of armour deal different types of... Uh, or protect from different types of damage. Plate armour is uh, just plate armour. It's effective against most weapons, uh, but not super effective against anything. A plate of armour is much stronger against smaller weapons, um, like things from lots of tiny ships and reactive armor is effective against huge weapons like the missile launcher here or the torpedo launcher or things like that that are on these big capital ships at least that's as, that's my understanding of it it's entirely possible that is incorrect feel free to correct me in my comments but be kind okay you know what can I get another one of those missile launchers on oh I'll need more command I'll decrease my supply and get the crew facilities. There we go. Okay, now in my last remaining slots, I think I'm going to put a bit more supply in. 59k. The enemy ship had 61, so yeah, that's acceptable. In fact, I'll bump it up to 71, I think, because I've got plenty of. Actually, no, I'll put some armor there, just in case. Usually, this place is good to put uh, vital systems, because you've got these armor plating uh, parts, which are pretty good at defending your innards. Um, but yeah, I'll just put a couple plates there, just to increase its health. And I think this is a decent design. Again, I'm no expert, but I think this should be pretty good what we need it to do. It's got a much bigger support capacity than our previous Dreadnought. Um, got a lot more supply. It's pr It's got a bit more health actually, I think. Yeah, more health. Um, probably less DPS by a significant margin, but well, that's okay. We'll be using the extra support to provide our DPS. So let's call this something simple. Uh, this is where I fall apart in these games, naming them. Let's just call it the intre... Oh, that's not how you spell intrepid at all. Intrepid. That's not how you spell it either. Intrepid, there we go. Intrepid Mark 1. So, save this ship design. Now, this ship design is saved for the current game. If I were to open it up and click export, I can export it to a file directory so I can get this design at any time. 
Um, I'll do this just in case. Um, like maybe it, this design could be extremely effective, and in another game I might want it. But we'll see. Uh, so you can see, just looking at it, uh, its initial cost is less, but its overall cost per turn is a lot more. That is something I'm okay with. Usually, the uh, mitigating co mitigating factor is the uh, money you have at the moment because you've still got three minutes to get the money back so there's always something you can do now we are also going to need to edit these guys I think I'm just going to create a new design instead of editing them specifically uh, but let's create a nice missile cruiser shall we okay crew deck these rarely take a lot so let's just go with one crew deck so yeah one crew on this provides four command whereas I believe from the other one it took two so, you're probably never going to need more than one cockpit. Let's put a little rocket engine on this. Uh, you don't need much for us to move these things because they have such little mass, so that should be enough of the entire ship. Okay, let's go with some plate armor up front. Just like that, just to protect it from weapons firing forward. And let's put a missile launcher right here on the side and fill up the middle with that. In fact, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. If I put another one there and give it that much, we'll put this here and give it about that, that's equal. I'm divvying up the firepower just in case one of these gets destroyed and it's still got some DPS left. I'm not sure whether it's better to go with um, multiple uh, weapons which are less of, less damaging on their own but you have your DPS split or whether it's best just to go with one weapon. Uh, the damage in this is based on like whether or not you hit the part so I would say that it's probably best to... Actually I don't even need those there. I think I'll put these there and then Oops. Alright, let's see if I can... Can I not... Come on, I'm trying to make it so this is still protected and... Oh, right, because I can't... There's only one. Yup, that makes a lot of sense. Okay. Um... Let's try... Oh, no, you can't do that at all. Alright, then we won't have a plate armor there, we'll just go with the plate armor where I put it last time. Alright, so yeah, um... What was I saying? The damage is based on, like, where the bullets actually hit. So it's similar to sort of stars in that regard. So it's good to have like lots of armor up front, so that you can protect from weapons that are coming in from the front, which is usually where they come from. So we'll call this one the Hornet One. It's size two, so this will be replacing the missile cruiser, I think, or something of that regard. Missile boat, yep. And if we have a little look at this. Um, we've got, it's got one weapon, hmm, that's interesting. It's also a different design entirely. Huh. That is interesting. Oh, it's a Corvette size. Okay, so it's a Corvette design, but they upgraded the size to two, I see. So it does, it has more DPS, it has 60 HP, let's see it, R1. Ours more, ours has more HP, but less DPS. Hmm. Let's see if we can change that. You know, we're at a size 2 plus. Maybe I can make this a size 3 ship. Make it slightly more expensive. But increase the DPS by a lot. Yeah, okay, we'll go with this design to see what it's like. Let's save this. Uh, we'll also... Uh, I'll keep the gunship. That's decent enough design. 
And I think I'll replace the beam ship as well. Let's go with a destroyer design. Uh, we'll keep it up at the same size. with armor plating all the way up the top. So there's no harm in it. Actually, do the crew deck first. Let's put that there, then the rocket engine there. A little bit off center, but that's okay. That might be a bit too much for us. I'll compare it with the beam ship later. I think that's pretty much it. We can just go with the beam weapon now. Okay, let's replace that bit with some plate armor. Beams can take up a lot of space. You'll notice that this got very low DPS. This is because it is a. Uh, it damages over time, so. It doesn't really have a high DPS, but it uh, does a lot of damage to unshielded areas. Uh, I suppose I can ex probably explain better later on, but. Put some more plate armor down here. Uh, 16k, I think that's slightly better. 0.8 DPS, 111 health. Yeah, it should be fine. And let's call this the Lancer 1. Okay, save. Now let's compare them both. Okay, so it costs less. Less. Uh, it has more DPS, this ship, but more health. Yeah, it doesn't have that much armor, and it's a smaller design overall, so... Yeah, there's not much to choose between them. Um, I kind of like this, it's a bit more sturdy, but we are going to need ships that have practically no armor at all, like the gunship and the missile boat, to actually do some damage. In fact, let's change this, this, this slightly, get rid of that armor at the back. In fact, let's test something real quick. Does having two sources increase the DPS at all? I don't think it does, but... Well, it's got two weapons now, so... It's a bit more diversified. Alright, let's save that design. And we should probably hit play. Oops. Hit play, okay. So, seeing as this Dreadnought is already full on capacity, and I don't really have the money to build any more. What my plan was, was to get these ships together. You see this one's got a lot of missile boats which contribute more to strength. This one's just got beam ships on it which is um, not desirable. But if we mix it up it should be okay. What I'm planning on doing is using one of these power cells because I've got a lot of power. I'm getting one per second which is fantastic. Mostly due to this reactor core I've got here. Or, well, entirely due to that reactor core. Um, so what I'm going to do is use one of these power cells. People might think that's a waste, but at this point in time, I think I'm going to lose this fight if I do not act quick, quick, quickly. Man, that dreadnought is moving slowly. It's like it... doesn't have anywhere else to be in the world. Okay, well, it might... it's going to lose... why is it moving so damn slowly? Did this engines get destroyed? Oh, his engines are fine. It's just terrible at moving. <sighs> well, seeing as you're gonna die anyway, attack. Well, that was annoying. And if you'll excuse me, I'll be right back. And I'm back. Apologies for that, my cat was being a pain. Uh, right, so yeah, I'm gonna have to... Uh, I'm gonna have to probably use it on this, aren't I? Alright, I'm going to use the command computer on this to increase its capacity. Oh, wait, we don't have control of this command? 
Where is the command computer? Power all the power. It's all in these territories. It's just because we've explored it and we know about it. God damn it. Oh, and they're just going straight for my place. I see. Um. Ah, this anomaly's been scanned. Oh, do I try and take control? I could use a warship. I could also use money. Yeah. Hang on. I need to think about this decision. Alright, if I get the money, I can use it to build a war fleet. However, that will take time. And I don't know how long I will be alive. If I activate the warship, it is... There's a possibility I get a ship. There's also a possibility I get more enemies. However, these enemies might also fight my enemies. Because <laughs> that's what the AI does. So it's possible... But if I activate the warship, no matter what happens, I'll be able to fight these guys off. But there's no guarantee that I'll have enough weapon power to fight those guys, guys off. Whereas if I get the money, I know for sure that I'll have a set amount and I could start producing ships. Even though this guy's filled to capacity, I've still got a lot of good ships here thanks to my military source. Oh, this is a hard decision. Let's just take a look at the production here for a second. It would take four minutes to bu build a Intrepid. I could afford it, but it would take four minutes. I don't know if I have four minutes. I could probably take this system fairly quickly. And they're going here. You know they're going here. And then they'll destroy this fling beacon, which I really don't want to lose. Sorry about that, I had to mute. I was sneezing. I spared you it. Oh, what do I do? I think I'm gonna have to go for the money here. Yeah, I'm gonna go for the money. But instant gratification. Or instant death. Oh, I'll take the money. I took the safe option. Yucky. Alright, you guys need to go over here, because they are... Warping in with a vengeance. Does this place have any production? Yes, it does. A significant amount as well. Hmm. Build an Intrepid. And build a fleet to support it. Okay. Can I export my production to it? I don't think I can. I can only do that to... Oh, wait. I can transfer support ships? Do it. Um, don't know where is where. <laughs> Wait, that's got less, so it's probably. Wait, I need to see what kind of defenses this has got. Okay, so that's got twenty. T Wait, is that the right one I picked? God damn it. Okay, that's one with a negative 32. Alright, let's give you some heavy gunships, some missile boats. Holy shit, they're producing these guys fast. Like, that's incredible. I've got 12 heavy gunships already. Like, shit, I'm just I'm gonna keep transferring these guys. This system will be untakeable. Let's give it some cannon fodder too. Alright. Well, that's certainly one way to defend this place. Are they all going at sublight speeds? Wait, are they all going to Vic 2? Ugh, this game sometimes, I don't understand. Um, battleship? 
that's um, not really something you can win. Give your supports to these guys. And then kind of run away. I need you to scan anomalies. Oh god, I don't know what happened to those support ships. Let's pause the game for a second. I shouldn't have been building my fleet here, I should have built it at the other place. Okay, so... How are they being sent there? That's the question. You know I should totally send a sh fleet back here and try and take their water world instead. Maybe they weren't producing these extra far. Well, no, they were definitely moving. Huh. I can't tell. I think the first thing I need to do is discover which of these resources here I actually have in my territory. Looks like none. That sucks. Do I really have none of these things? That really sucks. I almost wish I didn't have a scout now, because then I wouldn't know about these and it wouldn't have got my hopes up. Hmm. Well... I think I'm going to have to end the episode here. Uh, let's just hope these guys run out of supply. No, we've actually done some damage to them. Like we've lost 200. So, one step at a time. I'll see you next time.